as a parent. I can also imagine the terror I'd feel if one of my family members were rounded up in the middle of the night and sent to Guantanamo Bay without even getting one chance to ask why we were being held and being able to prove my innocence. That was then Senator Barack Obama in 2006 speaking against the Military Commission Act, which denied habeas corpus to det detainees at Guantanamo. The Supreme Court eventually ruled in 2008 that Guantanamo detainees did have a right to habeas. They could challenge their imprisonment in federal court. After that ruling, the Bush administration decided that instead of bringing detainees to Guantanamo, they'd take them somewhere else, another location outside the jurisdiction of a court, Bagram Airfield in Afghanistan. Detainees found themselves in the same legal black hole, but a different location. Today, there are between six to 800, quote, unlawful enemy combatants held indefinitely at Bagram, and President Obama is in favor of it. President Obama is on the exact opposite side of the argument that Senator Obama was in 2006. The Obama administration has continued the Bush policy. When three detainees currently imprisoned in Bagram challenged their status, the administration argued against them. The White House lost that argument in front of a conservative judge who ruled the detainees did in fact have a right to habeas. So the Obama administration appealed that decision. And today, President Obama scored a victory to keep those detainees locked up indefinitely without even getting one chance to prove their innocence in court. Why the disparity? In the unanimous 26-page ruling, the court ruled that Guantanamo Bay is a, quote, territory that, while technically not part of the United States, is under the complete and total control of our government. In Bagram, the surrounding circumstances are hardly the same. There is no indication of any intent to occupy Bagram with permanence. The ruling went on to distinguish that Bagram is currently in a theater of war, and Guantanamo doesn't have the same threats to security. So in the prison in question is Guantanamo, Detainees have a right to a court hearing, but those held in Bagram, no chance. Is this the American way? And why does President Obama oppose the legal black hole in Guantanamo, but is in favor of it in Bagram? Joining me now is Shane Cuddedup, senior managing attorney of the Guantanamo Global Justice Initiative at the Center for Constitutional Rights. Shane, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Chris. Well, I, what do you think the court gets wrong when it distinguishes between detainees in Guantanamo and those being held in Bagram? Right. Well, you know, the lower court here at the trial court level, by, uh, in a ruling by one of the most conservative judges in the district appointed by George W. Bush, said, look, there's almost nothing to distinguish Bagram from Guantanamo. The U.S. has complete control over the facility. The Afghans don't have anything to say about its operation. Um, and there are no real practical concerns about sending lawyers in there. Uh, you know, and the government came back and said, well, it's in Afghanistan and the entire our country is, a, is an active theater of war. And what the court said in response to that was, well, for these three petitioners, you know, all three of them were non-Afghans, Yemenis and Tunisians, and uh, they were all picked up outside of Afghanistan and brought by the United States into Bagram, into Afghanistan, to be held there. And the court said, well, if I allow you to, uh, to you know, kick anyone's case out of court who's held in an active theater of war, that will allow you to hide people from the courts by bringing them into an active theater of war. And, you know, you remember that Guantanamo was really designed in the same way to be a place to hide detainees from the rule of law. Uh, but the, the Court of Appeals today said that it wasn't concerned about that. And, and the way it distinguished it was really sort of nonsensical. What it said was these guys have been held for so long, seven to eight years, that if you go back to the time they were brought to Bagram, you know, nobody knew that anybody outside the 50 states who wasn't a U.S. citizen had any right to get into U.S. courts. <laughs> so, you know, they're saying there's no risk of manipulation to send people to Bagram back then because we could just as easily have sent them to some other offshore hellhole. And, uh, and nobody back then knew that any of them had any sort of rights to get into federal court. So that, so that actually makes me think it, it maybe is a, is a narrower, narrower ruling than it appears, which is to say, if you, if you grab people now and send them, would that same logic the court used applied, or would that be a different story? Right. You know, the court was a little bit careful. The Court of Appeals today was a little bit careful to say, well, if Obama is thinking about, you know, making this into his own Guantanamo by bringing people there in the future, uh, well, you know, now we're concerned about the manipulation factor <laughs> um, because, uh, you, know, uh, you know, going forward, uh, this looks different from Guantanamo. But, uh, but as for anybody who's been there for seven or eight years, no dice. Um, they're out of luck. So in that way, it's a little bit like Bush v. Gore, where the Supreme Court said, 
you know, where it took this very aggressive sort of um, position on equal protection rights to overturn uh, the recount in Florida, but then said you can never apply this sort of principle anywhere else. It's a one-off. I'm wondering if you're surprised by how vociferously the administration has argued on behalf of this power. I mean, I think there's a fear that this is going to become essentially, I mean, we haven't closed the, the original Guantanamo, but this will become Obama's Guantanamo. Is that, is that something you're worried about? Well, uh, that's certainly a fear, but, uh, you know, the, the, the real Obama, Guantanamo is nowhere near closing either. And, uh, you know, the president has pretty much, um, you know, done nothing other than improving the conditions there uh, and finding new homes for some asylum seekers there uh, and done nothing to distinguish himself from the Bush administration. You know, and the reason is, uh, is pretty clear why, uh, why administrations from different parties are, are willing to keep these places open. It's because nobody wants to admit that most of the people there are there by mistake. Uh, so Major General Stone last August issued a report that said over, he didn't issue it, but he wrote it and parts of it leaked, saying 400 out of 600 Bagram detainees uh, should never have been picked up, should be released. Um, and we see the same thing in Guantanamo, where people were brought in because of bounty payments or uh, because, uh, you know, there were the, the, the wrong nationality in Afghanistan. Shane Cuddedal, senior managing attorney of the Guantanamo Global Justice Initiative at the Center for Constitutional Rights. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Have a good weekend. Thanks for having me.